I just want to talk briefly about women and schizophrenia. So when I um, started my research work, this was the early uh, work that I had been involved in, which was just basically looking at the differences. Um, schizophrenia is not something you would think is a gender-based uh, condition. But in actual fact, we do know that there are two time periods of greater incidence of schizophrenia. It's at the um, uh, onset, which is between uh, about 20 to 25 years, first episode schizophrenia in women, and then there's another peak of onset, which is in the 45 to 50 year old woman. And it's uh, both um, time peaks are about equal in terms of prevalence in community. We know that there are sex differences in, in schizophrenia, with the later onset for women, increased vulnerability at periods of hormonal change. So many times women describe premenstrual exacerbation of psychosis. And we also know that there are um, postnatal psychosis and menopausal psych psychosis, either relapses or first time um, presentation. And all of these time periods are related to low estrogen phases. And this is where the estrogen protection hypothesis has come from. Estrogens, and it's estrogens, because they're not, it's not just one, in the CNS have, have a number of neuroprotective um, effects. There's a genomic effect, which is a delayed effect, and then there's a non-genomic or a direct effect. And that is where estradiol can work on preventing cell death, axonal sprouting, regeneration, and synaptic transmission, which gives it the role of being a neuroprotective agent. And we tend to forget about that because we know more about its reproductive role, but it is actually a potent neurosteroid. The other thing that estrogen does in neurotransmission is it actually is a dopaminergic um, down regulator as well as serotonergic down regulator and plays a role in cholinergic system as well as um, a combination of all of these, which means that it can have, role, it can have a role as an antipsychotic and as an antidepressant. So I'm not gonna go through all the different trials that we've done, but this is um, one of our major studies that um, uh, we published in molecular psychiatry just last year. And the guts of this work has been uh, and I'm quickly skipping through it, but to look at the impact of using estrogen as a treatment adjunct. So we haven't done the studies where there's no antipsychotic because that would be unethical. But in terms of using estradiol, and we think that the best estradiol is straight estradiol transdermal 100 micrograms as an adjunct, has provided us with the um, ability to talk about the fact that estradiol does improve positive symptoms of psychosis, the general symptoms of psychosis, but doesn't really do very much for the negative symptoms um, of psychosis. Negative symptoms being the most difficult to try and treat. Um, that's the guts of the summary of the, of the ADEPT study. So basically, it is a situation where if you've got a patient who you're stuck, you know, you've managed the schizophrenia to as good a level as, as you can with the antipsychotics, and I often get referrals of women who just haven't made that extra bit of improvement, that they're really not able to function, it might be worth thinking about adding in a, um, a hormonal adjunct, and that is um, 100 micrograms of transdermal estradiol. Now, if she has a uterus, that, that is, if she has not had a hysterectomy, um, you will need to add in some progesterone as well. And we do work with gynecologists to use the Mirena IUD, and that's an IUD that has progesterone. And the reason for that is because it then keeps the progesterone local without too much systemic involvement. Progesterone is a, is a funny hormone. It really does have some depressogenic aspects to it. So we have to be careful that we don't actually create a depressive uh, illness. Um, I won't talk about the, the males, but we have got male studies. And I'm very excited about the next level of research that we're doing, which is with this group of medications, the selective estrogen receptor modulators. A number of companies have this in their pipeline. Reloxifen is out there as one of the first ones. Um, but there are a number of other uh, types of the selective estrogen receptor, uh, receptor modulators in, in the pipeline. And this is important because these are the so-called brain estrogens. Estrogen works on the alpha and est uh, beta receptors. And the, where we want the um, estrogen effect is to be in the CNS and not on um, breast, ovarian and uterine tissue. So 
this is actually the answer to um, the quest that we've been on, which is to find the way to deliver the oestrogen to the brain, but not have the problems in, in the systemic body. So raloxifen is something that we have been working with. And um, again, I'm running out of time, so I won't go through all of the studies that we've done. But I can tell you that basically um, we found that, in fact, in the postmenopausal women, that there was a significant improvement with the addition of 120 milligrams of raloxifen, which is called Evista, every day. So this is a tablet. It's not a transdermal preparation. But the improvement in the positive symptoms of psychosis and the cognition was what we immediately picked up clinically, as well as in the research sense. So this is for postmenopausal women. It's really important that we remember that schizophrenia is a heterogeneous disorder. No two people with schizophrenia really look the same. And in the heterogeneity, we need to remember that hormone treatments are not going to be the same across the board. So never let anyone tell you that they've got a solution to all of schizophrenia because it's not going to be that way. It'll be that you'll find something that'll work in one group of patients and not another and so on. So we think the best place for the serum is in the postmenopausal women. We are doing a study in uh, women of childbearing age and we're also doing a study of, in men. But we'll tell you about that as we, as we get the results. I think hormone modulation is an important research and clinical approach for many psychiatric conditions. And it's important that, you know, again, it underlines the need for a gender approach. But the hormone fluctuations in the monthly and um, significant life cycle is natural, but it can actually have significant impact. So people go, well, what are you medicalizing, you know, menopause for, or why are you saying that these premenstrual dip is, is, uh, is a problem? It's a problem for the patient. And if it is a, a clear hormone dip, then we can think about hormone strategies. Mm -hmm.